Listen, this is, the, this is the thought of God. This is the mindset of God. He sees you as a partner with his son. He has called me into partnership. This is, this is, one, of the, it is one of the greatest callings you can ever have in life. For me to know that the creator of the universe, the almighty God has called me into fellowship, into partnership with his son Jesus. You see, before Jesus came, there was what looks like a pseudo or a false kind of, or a shadow form of partnership that God had, you know, with, with the prophets of old. But it wasn't reality. Now, if those kind of shadow partnership could give them <laughs> the results they got in the Old Testament that we read and we are so odd about, like Elijah calling down fire, like Elijah dividing the, 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 the river into two and walking through, like Ezekiel encountering the whirlwind of the Lord in Ezekiel chapter 1, like Abraham and so on and so forth. We see how powerful they were. They knew, they knew something. They knew that they had something with the God of Israel. But they were so afraid, but they knew they had something. That was why Moses could speak to God and say, God, you know me, you see me, you know my name. I have not seen you. Now, I want to see you. Show me yourself. It takes understanding of a relationship of a man and God to be able to boldly speak out to, to the Almighty God. But God didn't see it as pride. God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, Okay, no flesh can see me and survive. Now, for God to even tell him that shows how much he loved Moses. And he said, see, I'm going to pass. But you can't see my face. Because the, the moment you see me, you, you will die. You, can't, you, you won't live. So as I pass by, I'm going to cover your face, your eyes, and when I'm done, I'll take off my hands and you shall see my back parts. And the Bible says, indeed, God came to pass. And as God was passing, the Bible says that, and he pushed him into the cleft of the rock. There was a rock there. And the Bible makes us understand that that rock was Jesus Christ. Because nobody could see God except through Jesus. And so God had to push Moses into Jesus. But you see, that wasn't the, the full reality of Jesus. Because he had not been revealed. And so God had to help Moses, even when he pushed him into the rock, and covered his eyes. And the Bible says, and when God had passed by him, God took off his hands. I wonder how long God's hand is. <laughs> to have been able to, to push Moses into the cleft of the rock, covered his eyes, passed by him and took off his hands. And the Bible says, and, Mo and Moses saw the back part of God. Wow. Moses saw the back part of God. This is beautiful. Why? Because Moses opened the mouth and told God, that you know me. Moses was trying to talk about partnership here. He says, you know me, you know my name. I, I haven't seen you. Yes, I know your name, but I haven't seen you. I want to see you. And God didn't see it as a big deal. God didn't see it as blasphemy. God didn't see it as pride. Because that is what God wants to do. He wants to... Listen, the Bible says at the end of time, we are going to live with God. He shall be our light. So the God that was unseen is going to be seen by his children now. He's going to live with us. So he brought Jesus to come and... The Bible says that 
the things of old were all shadows. Now the reality was Christ. So Christ is God's reality of everything. So my point is, if the people of old, that the Bible calls all their acts and all the things we see as shadows, and yet they were so powerful, <laughs> yet they were, they were shadows, how much more the reality in Christ Jesus? We are supposed to see greater, mightier, more powerful stuff in Christ than in the old. But you see, this reality is already there. But it takes understanding, knowledge in God's word to be able to grasp and live in this. When I found, that, when I found this reality, I just made up my mind I won't pray for fruitfulness. I'll show you. And once you see it, you will not pray for fruit. Listen, there are a lot of things we are praying for when we already have them and we are already in them. So I love 1 Corinthians 1 9 when he says, Thanks be to God who has called us into partnership, into fellowship with God. Into fellowship with Christ Jesus. Oh, I have been called to fellowship with him. I have been called. Because the Bible says, For them that he did for new. The Bible says, For them he called. I have been called. He knew me. And he called me. But you see, God is not being biased. The call is, is open to everybody. Because Jesus didn't die for a group of people called Christians. I keep saying that. He died for the world. Now, there was some kind of partnership even in this. The Bible says that when Jesus was dying on the cross, we were in him. So the whole world died in him, you see. So Jesus did not die alone. He died with the whole world. When he was buried, he was buried with the whole world. You see the partnership here? When he was raised up, he was raised up with the whole world. So the partnership mentality and idea in God has been there right from the beginning. That is why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says that, in verse 1, the Bible says that he quickened us together with Christ. He made us alive together with Christ. So anybody, any human being that will believe this gospel, that Jesus came to die for them, automatically they become Christians. And they receive the life-giving power of Jesus Christ into themselves. And that changes them. In other words, they receive salvation. And salvation is the life-giving power of Jesus Christ because they believed what he did. That is what the Bible says. He loved us. Even when we were yet sinners. That is why he could die with the whole world. That is why it is not your job to try and be saved. It cannot. He made us sit with him together. You see the partnership here? All right. Now I'm going to show you something. Open your Bibles to 1 John. Uh, John chapter 15. I love this. Now I'm going to read a New Living Translation. Now, the title here says, Jesus, the true vine. Okay? But let's go through. Let's start from, from verse 1. It says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce more, even more, more. He says, you have already been pruned. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. You see. Then he says in verse 4, Remain in me 
and I will remain in you. You see the partnership Jesus is calling here? He says, remain in me and I will remain in you. Now I'm saying this so it gets, it gets deeply into your spirit. Now I see Jesus calling partnership here. He's saying that, he said, I am the true vine. He's telling you, I am the true grape vine. And he says, and my father is the gardener. He's just trying to show us the positions. Okay? Now let's go on in verse, um, from the verse 4. He says, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is cut off from the vine. Or if it dies off from the vine. The word is severed. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Did he hear that? He says you cannot be what? Fruitful unless you remain in me. First, Second Corinthians 5.17 If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Are you a born again Christian? Then you are in him. If you are in him, then you're going to be fruitful. It's clear. If, if I'm in him, as the Bible says, there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that anyone that believes that Jesus is Lord, the Bible says he lives in God and God in him. He says, you cannot be fruitful. I love this statement. You cannot be fruitful unless you remain in him. Then the verse 5, he says, yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Okay, so now he's calling, he's calling me out here. Now when he started, he never talked about the branches. I, I wasn't, I wasn't, we were not mentioned here. He talked about himself. He talked about his father. And he talked about the benefit of remaining in him. Now we are coming forth. He says that, yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me, did you hear that? Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Let me just show you this. Oh, I am fruitful. I am fruitful. Now, if you can have the fullness of this, if you, if, if you can have an understanding of this, you will not struggle with fruitfulness. And listen, I'm talking about fruitfulness in every area. Because my Jesus is not limited to certain things. He's open and he's, he's, he's all powerful in any situation. Now, let me just do this. You know, Jesus said he's the vine. So he's talking about the stem. Okay? With the roots that goes deep in the soil. Now, on the stem, okay, on the vine, is found branches. That branches in different and various directions. The stem naturally or usually does not produce fruit. It is the branch that produce, produces fruit. Right? Yes. But the branches do not have access to water and other nutrients unless it is pulled by the stem which has the root oh follow me so Jesus as the vine becomes the source of the branches and the branches will depend or feed on the nutrients and the water that comes from the stem 
for them to be able to produce the fruit. Now, when you cut off the branch, in no time, the stem will die. Because then it's useless. You know what? Because the leaves receive sunlight for the tree. You see? So in as much as the leaves are receiving, for them to photosynthesis related, they need sunlight to be able to, able to produce. Now listen. The stem, the vine, already has a seed, a hidden, a hidden seed of fruit that is not sown. It is shown in the branches. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. John chapter 4 verse 23. Prophet and Mrs. Danielle and Dorinda Jedu of Word and Spirit International invite you to experience atmosphere of glory which is an atmosphere of worship, praise, word and spirit ministration. This is happening on Sunday the 31st of October 2021 at 8 a.m. The theme for this year, the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit. By popular request, we are bringing the essence of worship back to life through the spirit-filled ministrations of Reverend Cynthia McCauley and the choir of the house, the Fire Hearts. So, make a date with us. Remember, it's happening on Sunday, 31st October 2021 at Word and Spirit International's Auditorium, the Faith Arena. Locate Word and Spirit International at the Billy Down Container, Adringano East Legon, right adjacent the Goyle Filling Station. You won't miss it. Call Word and Spirit International on 050 432 8959 or 027 510 Come and experience the Shekinah in an atmosphere of glory that will leave you filled and drunken with the Holy Spirit. WSI, call to glory and excellence. See you there. When you see a mango tree, before the fruits come, we don't need to see the fruit to be able to call it a mango tree. We just see the tree by its stem and leaves, and we just know this is a mango tree. And it has the ability to produce the fruits. But we don't see the fruits hanging in the stem. Yet, it has a seed and ability to produce. Now, the production is done through the branches. So, by the fruit, you, shall, you can tell what kind of tree this is. Now, I'm just trying to tell you. You see, I've been saying this. Jesus needs us to function. So do we need Jesus to function. And God is not mad about it. Because when Jesus was here on earth, he was telling them that I and my father are one and they wanted to stone him. He was telling them I am the son of God. He was telling them if you have seen me, you have seen the father. And they called it as blasphemy. Why? Because the Jewish people, I mean, the, the Jews in those times, they understand that flesh, man, cannot equate himself to a sovereign God, a deity. But they did not know where he came from. They didn't have revelation about the man that was saying he's, we are one. Because in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says that and, and the Holy Ghost is the Father of Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says he shall be called the son of the Holy Ghost. Yet they didn't have this revelation. In the same way, we are born of God. First John 4. He says we are of God. We come from God. We hail from him. If I come from him, I don't know why and how I can be so different from him. Even the Bible says we have, we have become partakers of his divine nature. His divine nature, whoever he is, how he is, what he is. He says, I have become a partaker of his divine nature. It doesn't make me lesser in nature than who he is. But the truth is, we happen to be in this flesh, in this body here on earth to survive. In Galatians chapter 2, I think from verse 20, you hear what Paul said. Let's, let's read it. We'll come back to 1 John. Uh, John chapter 15. Go, go there. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. He says that my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So, listen, so I live in this earthly body. Oh. Now he's separating himself from the earthly body. So he's saying that, so I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God. Paul knows that there is this fellowship, there is this partnership between himself and the Son of God. And so for him to be able to succeed, for him to be able to function here in, in this world, in his earthly body, faith in the Son of God. He said, who loved me and gave himself for me? He said, I will not frustrate the grace of God. Now, without knowledge about the partnership we have in Christ, it is likely you will frustrate it. Because you, listen, do you know what the grace of God means? Unmerited favor. An unmerited advantage. I did, just imagine. You being compared with a supreme being. And he says, don't worry about it. Your new nature is like mine. Oh, how I wish Christians would get this. Can you see Paul separating himself from his earthly body? You are not this earthly body. You are not this body. Not at all. You are not. You only need this body to be able to, to, to function, to move. In this world. But Paul is saying that. Even for him to be able to do that. Because you see. There are a lot of things that happen in this world. And he cannot survive here. He cannot. He, he cannot. Unless he receives. Supply from his source. And to trust in the son of God. Means to receive supply. Did you hear that? To trust in the Son of God means to receive supply. That is why John 15 is saying that if you remain in me and I in you, you, you will be fruitful. Because I will keep supplying you with all the nutrients, with all the water that you need to be able to produce your fruit. In fact, I am going to be your, I'm going to be your supporter when it comes to fruitfulness. And as long as I am in Christ, I have no choice but to bear much fruit. But let me say this. You see, not every branch also bears fruit. 
You remember in Mark chapter 11, Jesus saw the grape, the vine, and wanted to eat of it. And the Bible says, and there was no fruit for him to eat. Now, the Bible said, made a statement that because it was not the season for, for fruit production. So I, I know a lot of critics <laughs> would say, then Jesus was not fair to the tree. Listen. When we are concerned, all things are possible and must be possible. Whatever Jesus wants, he must get. If you are not ready as a tree to provide for the master, get off the way. Let's give the opportunity to another tree. That is the reason why you cannot be disadvantaged in any way. You know why? Because you have the name of Jesus. So whatsoever I want, but lack of knowledge and insufficient understanding of God's word would make you sometimes think 50% earthly thoughts and 50% heavenly thoughts. But that is not the mindset of God. He wants you to be heavenly conscious. That is why you need the word of God to give you the right information to brainwash you. To give you a complete overhauling of your thoughts. So you can imbibe into your spirit the truth of his word. And the truth of his word is his reality for you. So he says, once I remain in him, I will be fruitful. The question is, when am I going to be fruitful? When? Is that something that I need to do? No. I am set. I am set. Of course, every tree will produce in its season, right? But when it comes to us, we live beyond the elements and the operations of this world. So, instead of waiting for five years, you can have your fruitfulness, your fruit today. Amen. How do I know? That is why he has given you faith. And faith is not tomorrow. Faith is now. So he said, when you pray, believe in your heart that you have received it. Oh, it means when I lift up my hands and I begin to pray, whatever I'm praying about, I should just now, not tomorrow, now, at that moment, I should just believe in my heart. Now, to believe in your heart means there is, there is a reasoning between my spirit and the Spirit of God. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I hope you have been blessed and your life will never be the same. Just watch out for the next episode and it's going to be amazing. Now, for those of you who have not subscribed to my page yet, please visit my page on, on YouTube, Prophet Daniel Jedu, and subscribe. And then don't forget to also click on the notification button so you can be receiving a lot of videos from us as and when we upload them. If you have any questions, if you have any uh, prayer requests, you can just inbox us or you can just comment and we will make sure we get back at you. The Lord bless you. See you next time. In Jesus' name. Amen.